Well, um, a loss again, but not without a valiant effort at the end. I'm gonna have to give VIP to the Revenant Titan. He did insanely better than last year. Last year he didn't even get a shot off at the opposite team. Not one. Blew up at a, my own team, but not on the other team. This year, um, yeah, he definitely probably took out more than his points worth of models on the team. He took out the Hierophant by himself on the one round, so mega props to him. Replacements, did the Mirage, he was all good. I'd have done a few things differently. One of them would have been not having a lot of my force back there. That was just wasted points and a lot more shooting that could have gone off that unfortunately wasn't. I was more afraid of things popping up from behind, which I guess I tried to cover the back, but it never actually happened. Everything was all the front. Not surrounding our objective so that way James wouldn't despoil it as we knew he would. There's always next year. That could have gone better. Um, well, you know, I'm glad we didn't lose by much. Though I feel bad that I, you know, it's like my, my one goal in this game was, it's like, you know, after uh, Stefan's defeat last time, my, my, my objective here was, whatever I do, I cannot let Stefan lose. And I have failed. I must, I must atone, I know. I'm sorry, man. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> His teammate will uh, do that, will take care of that for next year. But all things considered, you know, we managed, we, Held our ground admirably, and uh, I am not displeased with the result. Uh, overall, I think there were a lot of poor decisions that we made, uh, a lot of things that I would have done differently in retrospect. In general, my army performed overall pretty good. Not a lot stood out, you know, everything performed uh, adequately. The Pathfinders and their stealth optimized devilfish kind of obscured things, kept them people from shooting our front line, including the Titan for a few turns, which was good. The one thing that I had in, uh, in store here in the back, the uh, Disruption Beacon Equipped Piranha. Uh, that was a bit kind of my uh, my secret weapon. Well, not really secret, because I used it once before in a small apocalypse game. And so they knew I had it, and as I predicted at the very beginning, it was the very first thing to go. So the Stealth Devilfish was able to prevent a squad of horrors from seeing the Titan, thus preventing us from being destroyed by our own models. So yes, Stealth Devilfish, always a good investment. Uh, other than that, the lowly guardsman who I've had lying around forever, uh, I used this game as a Catachin ambush squad, and uh, their ambushing was able to uh, thin out some numbers of Tyranids. Certainly not enough, but it helped. And the new Barracuda, which I got, was uh, again performed admirably, managed what? to take out a number, and managed to take out the actual last of the Necrons, holding the. One objective, which we... Stop it! Thank you, Damn it. I thought we were going to get away from it that time. Every time. So yeah, it was, it was pretty good. So, that was us. And I think it was a learning experience. Reminded me some key lessons here. Such as never put the broadsides in cover. Because something's... The thing, Tyranids are always in cover everywhere. You are safe nowhere, except in the open in the middle of an open field. And then you are not safe at all because then, then people can shoot you and so it's, it makes you paranoid. Now anyway, it's better end this before he finds it. Going into this battle, the main goal of the Tyranid and Necron force was to be adaptive and I'd say if nothing else we did that well. That generally required us just throwing ourselves into the fire of the enemy but it seemed to pay off in the end. I guess as far as VIPs go, um, my broodlord, Janus, who is a converted chaplain, uh, did really well. He came in with the gene stealer infestation, and I expected him to be gone almost instantly, but not only did he fight his way through several uh, pathfinders and then into a horde of uh, Imperial Guard, as well as fighting off a wolf lord on a cyber wolf, he also managed to take out one of Brendan's battlesuit commanders before finally being felled. The other VIP goes to the Raveners, specifically this little guy, who, after consolidating on the last turn, was able to get just within three inches of the objective to contest it. I've never actually found much use for Raveners, and thought very little of them. I guess I'll have to paint them now. 
I, I must give uh, honorable mention to the Yim Girl Steelers who appeared across the board and were able to tie up the back lines and also help feed misinformation that we might be appearing from their back lines. Overall, I guess I'm pleased with their performance. It was certainly a very, it was an uphill battle. I guess we'll have to see how they perform in the future. Uh, well. How do I think that went? Well, I think it went well. It uh, was tough, and there were several points of the game where I was convinced we were all doomed, but we managed to pull it off at the end. But, you know, as the case, things would be very different if there was one more turn in this game. There is not a whole lot left on either side, really, but our forces are stretched pretty thin, especially with the torrent of fire that was directed at uh, the uh, Tyranids and Necrons in that last turn. We could not survive much more of that. In terms of the battle plan, I guess it, it went a little awry, but we were able to adapt fairly well. Our plan had always been to um, hold the back two objectives pretty well, despoil the far back objective, and then aim to contest the three center ones. At the end, it kind of turned into us holding all of them and then trying to stabilize a battle line between them so that more everything would get thrown in and it would just get all bogged up up there. It worked relatively well, although eventually I think the way to fire thinned out our numbers enough that again, if it went on longer, things would be different. I don't know uh, if I would have done too much differently. I probably would have tried to avoid having the Demon Prince drop down a Vortex Grenade, but hey, it happens. Uh, he'll be back next year. Uh, for, uh, there were points of the game where I wondered if I had perhaps left too much back here, or whether I had overcommitted the forces, but I think in the end they served their purpose well. I, my goal was always to try and defend these two objectives pretty well. And uh, there is still quite a bit, uh, the bulk of my force that is left on the board is back here. And I don't think, certainly the far back objective was never under any real threat. I was expecting to see more battle suits coming in back here to be honest, but uh, they chose to join the main event up there. As for VIPs, I would have to say that probably first VIP would be this Chaos Sorcerer. He was the one who led the squad that despoiled the back objective. By his remarkable ability to not scatter, he uh, was able to turn the game a great deal in our favor. And also he survived uh, quite a bit against uh, in combat against Broadsides and Seer Council, so there's that. Second VIP would probably be the humble Green Tide. Now as viewers of our previous games will have known, the Green Tide generally does not fare well in these battles. It tends to get shot to pieces. I made a conscious effort this year to try and change that. I included Mad Doc Grotznik in there, and I also included this uh, big mech with the force field to give them an invulnerable save, and as a result of that, they were largely ignored throughout the game. So, they only took a handful of casualties, they're still mostly on the board, and they were what allowed us to hold the center objective, and also the sheer numbers of them that were left allowed us to spread out to ensure that there wasn't any trickery that could get in there within three inches to try and mess things up. So. They did well, so that is how it goes. Honorable mention has to go to Karen the Betrayer, who actually survived the entire game. I'm just, I'm blown away by that myself, but other than that, we'll see. See how it goes next year. Maybe next year I'll actually be able to get a psychic power off, but I wouldn't count on it. Okay. I totally didn't cut. <laughs> oh, damn it! Damn it! Oh. <laughs>